This sermon is titled The Power of the Spoken Word. Be enriched as you listen. We've been doing this series on faith and last Sunday we spoke about the power of the tongue. Uh, and you know we recognize that God has given us authority in the words that we speak. Now the choice is ours. We can choose to speak life or we can choose to uh, speak negativity and death. Uh, Whatever we choose, you know, that depends on us. But here's the reality that there is power. There is power in our tongue. And we also saw how the tongue can be an agent of heaven bringing forth life. Or it can uh, be, you know, sort of set on fire of hell. Uh, and it can become an agent of um, unbelief and doubt. And, and so we must always be aligned to the word of God and speak aligned to the truth of God's word. Now, this is a principle or a spiritual law given in the scriptures for us. And today we are going to look at uh, another aspect about words, uh, which is also a principle that we see throughout scripture. Now, both in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, uh, there is emphasis on speaking the word. Now, when we say uh, speaking the word, what we are referring to is speaking of the scriptures. So, um, talking aligned to the scriptures that God has given us. Uh, if we begin to talk about it, there's so much that you know we will have to touch upon. However, this morning, we will limit ourselves to three aspects of the spoken word. The first one being our daily vocabulary. The second one, uh, the spoken word, which is his covenant on our lips. And the third one, the spoken word as our weapon against the enemy. So we are going to focus on these three subjects. The spoken word um, is important. I know a lot of us, we, we believe in what uh, the word of God has to say and uh, somewhere we stop at that. But the Bible has so much to say about speaking, giving voice to what we believe in our hearts. So speaking is so very important. The spoken word is important. Let's um, first talk about how we can apply this in our everyday lives and in our daily vocabulary. We'll go to the passage from Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 11 through 16. Here Moses is talking to the people and he's talking to them about speaking God's word. So I'm going to read it out for us. He says, for this commandment, which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it too far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea, that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. See, I have said before you today, life and good, death and evil. In that, I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. So it's a very interesting commandment that Moses is giving the people uh, and he's instructing them and he's saying the word of God or what God is saying, it's not very far away. As if the word of God is up in heaven you know, and we have to hitch a ride to heaven to go find the word, to search the word, bring it and then believe it and then speak it. Or the word is not far away, no, beyond the seas, where we have to set sail, go, find it, bring it, believe it, and then speak it. But the word of God, Moses said, 
it's very near you very near you how close uh, can something be to us no uh, our breath is so close to us it's right here you know our mouth is in our body and we can speak anything that we want to and moses is saying god has put the word so close so close where is it the word is very near you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it and then he says choose life choose life the word is right there in any and every given circumstance choose life over death and evil now how do we choose life by speaking that word which is in our hearts and in our mouth and sometimes as god's people you know what we do is like the children of israel where we wonder where is that word in our difficult circumstances and situations now where is god what is he thinking about me right now what is he speaking about my situation and my circumstance but what is god saying god is saying i've given you my word my word is very near you in your heart in your mouth speak speak the word release the power of the word and when we speak aligned to the truth of god's word we are told that we are choosing life we are choosing good instead of um, affirming hopelessness which is probably an, an automatic response for all of us you know when things go wrong we we tend to uh, look down upon ourselves when things go wrong we tend to panic when things go wrong we allow uh, anxiety fear confusion to just uh, come in and take over but instead what we should be doing is to speak the word the word is very near you it's not very far away it's in your heart it's in your mouth and choose life by speaking hope speaking strength speaking life to speaking the goodness of god over our lives where we say surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life amen and so this is something that we as believers need to train ourselves with to speak the word of god and not speak hopelessness and we know that this instruction is connected to the blessings that will unfold in our lives when we begin to speak the word of god the blessings of god await us and that's the promise that moses um, shared with the children of israel as given by god as instructed by god so there are a couple of aspects you know we're not saying that uh, only speak the word and do don't do anything and you will you will walk into prosperity no because if we look at the scriptures very carefully there are a couple of things that we are called to do uh, those would be to believe the word to speak the word and also to do the word so all of this is important but today we are placing emphasis on speaking the truth of god's word um through our mouths let's look at the instruction to joshua joshua chapter 1 uh, and verse 8 think about joshua you now he is a, a mentee of moses and before he knew it the responsibility comes upon him you know a daunting task ahead of him and all these years joshua has seen moses lead the people now we don't know what joshua was going through but the words that god had to speak into his life were always um a positive they they imparted strength to his being when god said be strong and very courageous and god speaks to us in this manner he speaks life and hope into our hopeless situations and god gave instructions in order to guide joshua to be successful in his life so in joshua 1 and verse 8 he gives him some keys and he says this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success so very similar to the words of moses and the instructions of moses to the people even joshua is being instructed to keep the 
word where to keep the word in the in the heart in the mouth in the mouth so joshua 1 it says this, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth speak the word the word is very near you in your heart in your mouth this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night so god was instructing him to stay in the word and all these aspects of believing the word in order to believe the word we've got to hear the word faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god but we are talking about the mouth and the heart and we understand through scripture that the heart is the seat where faith arises when we sow the seed of god's word jesus uh, spoke this parable and he said that the seed is the word of god and when we sow the seed of the word of god in our heart or the good soil that's the seat where faith rises up and faith begins to rise up when we meditate on the word of god and that's what god was teaching joshua god was teaching joshua how to make his way successful firstly believe the word how to believe the word spend time in the word meditate in the word meditate is to is to uh, uh, you know mutter to think about the word constantly if we don't get it the first time maybe we get it the second time if we don't get it the second time maybe we get it the third time if we don't get it the third time maybe we get it the fourth time but keep on keeping on in the word of god meditate in it day and night day and night 24 bar 7 spend time in the word of god focus on the word of god let the word of god move from the head to the heart you know let let the hearing of the word let let it come to believing you know it's we're not talking about mind over matter but we're talking about faith biblical faith when we hear the word meditate on the word the the word goes deep into our hearts and we receive faith to do what god is calling us to do and that's what god was preparing joshua for and said meditate in the word of god and observe to do according to all that is written in it but we started the scripture where god told him this book of the law or the scriptures or if you want to call it the word of god shall not depart from your mouth speak the word speak the word at all times at all times what will happen then just the way god told the israelites but they would be blessed they'll be prosperous god's telling joshua you will be successful you will be successful if you believe the word speak the word and if you do the word and what is interesting is that in the new testament you know sometimes some of us believers we hear old testament scriptures and we tune off and we say oh tell me something from the new testament okay let's talk about the new testament romans chapter 10 verses 6 through 10 uh here apostle paul is speaking to the roman church and um, he is repeating the passage of moses and bringing in the emphasis on speaking and confessing the truth of god's word uh, so i'll quickly read the passage for us before we um, you know kind of unpack it to see what god uh, would like to speak to our hearts so from verse 6 but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven that is to bring christ down from above or who will descend into the abyss that that is to bring christ up from the dead but what does it say the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so we see that the word of god excuse me we see that the word of god that moses was talking about earlier <coughs> excuse me there's an exchange or an interchanging of words 
Moses talked about the word, which is not very far away. It's not in heaven or it's not beyond the sea. And here, <coughs> excuse me, Apostle Paul, he interchanges that word with Christ. Notice there's been a, a change in verses 6 and 7. And as we go on, in verse 8, he again quotes, very similar to what Moses spoke in the book of Deuteronomy. And once again, he says, the word is near you. So he is talking about Christ because that's the message which was preached to the believers under the new covenant. After the Lord Jesus did his earthly ministry, he died on the cross, he was buried, he resurrected, he ascended into heaven. The message of the early church was the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the message that the church preached everywhere that they went. There was revelation, much revelation about the work of Jesus on the cross. And notice how he says the word is near you and then he kind of expounds on that word in in those um, uh, in that same passage towards the end he says the word of faith which we preach so when he talks about the word or the Lord Jesus Christ here what he's talking about is the message or what Jesus has accomplished on the cross for us the word of faith in the New Testament, this is nothing but the gospel, the word of the gospel, the word of grace, the word of truth, the, the, the word of righteousness. You know, it's stated in different forms, but all that is talking about is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished on the cross for us. So what Paul is saying is, he's saying, speak the word, speak about Christ, speak about what Jesus has done for us. Now for us, sometimes as believers, and I'm including myself because I think it's a journey that I've made, uh, uh, you know, as a believer, uh, speaking never came easy. Speaking the word never came easy. Uh, but what Paul is telling the believers is, we've got to learn to speak. Discipline ourselves to speak what Jesus has done for us. Most of the times, we do our believing and we stop there. I believe in my heart, I believe that I am redeemed. I am a child of God. The blood of Jesus has washed me. I am victorious. I am triumphant. I am healed. I am delivered. You know, uh, I conquer. I believe. I believe everything in my heart. But Paul is saying, speak the word. Say what the word says. The word of faith. Faith in what? Faith in what the Lord Jesus has done for us. And that is something we have to learn to do. That is something um, we have to step out in order to make happen. To just open up our mouths and say it. And say it. You know, when the enemy comes against us and he says something like, Oh, you're not loved. Nobody cares. Uh, everyone's forgotten you. Just begin to speak the word. Say, hey, sorry. The Lord Jesus, God so loved the world. You know, I am part of the, the world, but I am also a child of God because I've accepted Christ into my life. And the Father loves me the way he loved Jesus. The Lord has lavished his love upon me. Speak of the love that God has already lavished on, on us instead of listening to the lies of the enemy or the pattern of thinking that we sometimes get stuck in. Speak the word. It's not enough to just uh, think of it within ourselves. But as Moses said, you know, as God instructed Joshua, as Paul spoke to the church, we've got to speak it. The word is very near us in our hearts and in our mouths. And we've got to speak it and say something like, I am loved. I am loved by God. You know, just the way the father loves Jesus, the father loves me. We need to open up our mouth and speak it. But the enemy will come against us with so many different things. But here is what God is teaching us to do. Believe the word and confess the word. Let's quickly look at two more scriptures in that same passage of Romans chapter 10. Verses 9 and 10. And it says that 
if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, once again, God is reminding us and he's saying that when we confess with our mouth, what happens is we position ourselves to receive what God has done for us. God has given us right standing with himself through the work of the cross. And we make that confession. When we make that confession, we are positioning ourselves to receive that right standing with God. And he goes on to say that when you believe in your heart and that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so when the confession of the mouth and the believing of the heart happens, we walk into the experience of what that word is about. And that is something God wants us to do at all times, at all times, in every situation of our lives, to think about what is it that uh, God is speaking in this situation? What is the truth of God's word in this situation? In John 17, 17, you know, the Bible tells us that uh, Jesus said his word is the truth. You know, his word that sanctifies us is the truth. And so we speak aligned to the word of God. And the enemy may come in with all kinds of doubts that he plants in our hearts. You know, maybe we are working with people and we feel like, uh, you know, I uh, am such an angry person or I'm not able to, to uh, show any love or kindness, compassion to the people around me. Just go to the word of God. What does the word of God say? You know, Romans 5.5, 5, we see that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. And so in that situation, I can always pick up the scripture and say, I do have love. It may not be my own love, but it's the love that the Holy Spirit has poured into my heart. And I work out of that love. The love of God is working in my heart. And I release that love and my relationships are blessed. Now maybe there are all these temptations and, and challenges that are coming our way. And the enemy is, is constantly taunting us and saying that you are not not going to stand for very long. Go back to the scriptures and see which scripture you could speak in those moments. When we look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, it reminds us that we are born of God and we overcome the world. You begin to speak that and say, hey, I'm not going down. You know, I'm not going to come under this sin. I'm not going to give in to this temptation. But I am born of God and I will overcome every work of the evil one. So in this way, just to begin to speak scripture in any and every situation, right? Maybe there's a new project that's come to us and uh, we're wondering, how am I gonna do this? It's too difficult for me. Or someone else who has done it before me, they did a brilliant job. Can I even match what they're doing? Begin to speak the word of God. The word says that when we ask for wisdom, uh, and, you know, we believe and ask for wisdom. God is faithful to give us wisdom. We go back to Isaiah 11, 2. The scriptures tell us that the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, he is the spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of understanding. He is the spirit of might. He is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Begin to speak that over yourself and say, I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because the spirit of the Lord empowers me. He gives me wisdom. He gives gives me understanding. So the, the words that come out of our mouths release power. And we've talked about this last week. So we choose life and begin to declare the truth of God's word that releases power into our lives. You know, we can just go on and on for any situation, every situation, there's a scripture that we can pull out and say, you know, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You know, God is preparing good works for me uh, and I'm going to walk into them. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for me because I love him. Just begin to speak the word, release the power of the word in our daily vocabulary. No place for hopelessness, no place for faithlessness. Yes, 
Are the situations real? Circumstances real? Nobody is denying the circumstances. But we are going by the greater reality of the truth of God's word. Where we are speaking hope, we are speaking health, we are speaking life. Amen? So that's the first thing that we want to place before us. The spoken word can become a part of our daily vocabulary. And when we say daily vocabulary, uh, it's not... Again, only what we are saying, but it comes from the outflow or the abundance of the heart. And the psalmist cried out to God in this way in Psalm 19 and verse 14. You know, he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And as a child of God, that's what we are saying. Lord, whatever I think, now, whatever I'm meditating on, whatever I speak, let it be delightful in your sight, O oh God. Let it be pleasing in your sight, O oh God. May you be blessed and glorified through my meditations, through the words that I speak. The spoken word, a part of our daily lives and our daily vocabulary. Let's move on. And talk a little bit about the spoken word, which is his covenant on our lips. The thing about a covenant is that it is as strong as the one who makes the covenant. And in our case, we know that God has made a covenant with us. He's made a promise with us. In Psalm 89, verse 34, it says, My covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. And so the word of God, all the promises of God that this Bible is filled with are so sure that we can have confidence in what God has spoken. Firstly, because of who He is, His word is truth, His promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. His covenant, he will not break. He will not alter the word that has gone out of his lips. And so church, we need to awaken to the fact that we are no ordinary people. We are people of the covenant. The king has made a covenant with us. And he says, he will not break that covenant. He will not alter that word that has come out of his lips. In Psalm 50 and verse 16, something very interesting for us to consider. It says, but the wicked God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth. So it's a rebuke. It's a rebuke. Why are we looking at this? To bring out a, a truth or a reality. God is rebuking the wicked, the unbelieving, who are not part of his family. And he's saying, you have no right to speak my word. Because you don't have any covenant. I don't have any covenant with you. But on the contrary, we are people of the covenant. And so, how should we deal with the word of God? It's got to be on our lips. The wicked, he said, you don't have any right to have the word on your lips. But to the believing, to us, his children, he says, you've got to have the word on your lips. And so when we encounter situations and circumstances, what do we speak? How do we deal with it? You know, what are we believing in our hearts? We've been meditating on the word of God and we've come to believe, but what comes out of our mouths? Now, sometimes it happens. We say we believe, right? Uh, yeah, I believe God will help me and then we go. And then when something doesn't go well, we say, I knew, I knew this is going to happen, right? So when we were believing, how come so quickly we can accept that actually we were not believing? Right? But it's not that kind of believing. When we are standing on the word of God, 
we have grounded ourselves we are now rooted on the word of god we're believing the word of god the next important thing is to have the covenant of god on our lips let's consider for a moment the battle that david had with goliath okay and it's amazing that david won before he fought that's the reality he won the battle before he fought the battle how did that happen this happened in first samuel chapter 17 and when we look at the words of david david spoke it says you know david stood up and he spoke he heard all about this giant called goliath and david spoke and he said who is this uncircumcised philistine who comes to defy the armies of the lord and then he goes on to say a uh, things like you come to me with a sword <coughs> with a spear and with a javelin but i come to you in the name of the lord of hosts the god of the armies the god uh, of the armies of israel something important in what he spoke david is speaking victory and when he said excuse me who is this uncircumcised philistine he's actually making a reference to covenant because the people who were circumcised were people of the covenant so what david is saying is goliath you don't have a covenant with god and i david i have a covenant with god and i'm going to take you down goliath i'm going to take you down you know you're coming to me with all your fancy equipment all your fancy armor and your weaponry that doesn't scare me because i am coming to you in the name of the lord he speaks his faith right he pulls out his weapon of faith against goliath and he says just the way i saw the lion lion and the bear you know uh, uh, defeated i'm going to see you defeated goliath and so that was david's faith you know that was david's faith in the covenant of god and he knew that when an enemy comes against a child of god who has a covenant with god it's quite easy victory is the lord's victory is the lord's so david was not willing to take the failure when we look at the armies of israel at that point you know, they were comparing themselves to goliath they were comparing themselves to the giant you know, they were comparing to this obstacle or this challenge which was standing before them and they were saying oh, we're not big enough we're not strong enough we're not experienced enough this giant will get us so what are they speaking they're speaking unbelief they are people of the covenant too but what's happening they're not able to receive the power of the covenant because they are speaking death they are speaking failure instead there was one teenager david who opened up his mouth he spoke and he said you may be big you may come to me with your javelin your sword um your spear but i come to you in the name of god you are uncircumcised meaning you don't have a covenant but i am a covenant person and giant you will fall you will fall in the name of jesus we are covenant people church with any situation and circumstance which is not of god that we may be facing we can have the covenant on our lips and say i am a child of god i am victorious i conquer by faith god anoints me <laughs> he fills me with his holy spirit and i see the power of his spirit manifest all around me make the covenant a part of our speaking let the covenant be on our lips there's so much that god has done for us in christ jesus we are now redeemed we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places we are sons and daughters 
we are ministers wherever we go we carry the presence of god we are speaking covenant when we speak like this begin to speak covenant begin to speak victory don't speak fear i have not received the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind i'm bold as a lion god makes me very strong and courageous as a covenant child going in for an interview a covenant child going in for an exam that's a covenant person you know, taking on the responsibility that god has given them maybe you're facing some giants some mountains some financial issues some legal issues some relational issues what does the covenant say speak speak the truth of god's covenant and every giant will come down every mountain has to be uprooted every wall that stands against god's joshua's has to come crashing down amen what did jesus say mark 11:23 uh, 24 when when he talked about speaking our faith did he say gaze at the mountain and it will be uprooted cast into the sea look at the mountain observe the mountain analyze the mountain speak about the mountain not at all he said say to the mountain if you believe in your heart and don't doubt it speak to the mountain speak to those difficulties speak to those financial problems speak to those legal challenges speak to those relational problems speak to those workplace problems and say be uprooted you mountain you may be too big you're bigger than me but you're not big enough for my god i come to you in the name of my god amen and this is the trick of the devil he wants to keep us in a place of uh, of fear intimidation faithlessness by speaking lies to us but we choose to rise above it we speak the word at all times we have his covenant on our lips at all times amen let's quickly look at the spoken word as a weapon against the enemy we have an enemy in satan and he's constantly looking for those he can devour scripture says that he's like a roaring lion and he wants to defeat god's people but god has given us mighty spiritual weapons that you and i can put on to face this enemy of us now in the list of the uh, parts of the armor in ephesians chapter 6 it's quite interesting there is one weapon which is the sword of the spirit ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17 the sword of the spirit and the bible says which is the word of god so there is a sword of the spirit the word of god which is given to us how to use the sword this sword it's interesting because it's a weapon of offense against the enemy every other weapon is that of defense we protect ourselves but here's a weapon or a part of the armor that we can use against the devil in the offensive the word of god the right way to use the sword is to speak it in revelation chapter 19 and verse 15 scriptures tell us that now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword it talks about the lord jesus and the words that he is speaking and it tells us that the words of jesus are a sword that go out of his mouth and we've been saying that god has given us weapons mighty spiritual weapons of warfare one of which is the sword of the spirit that is the word of god in order for us to use the sword of the spirit like jesus we've got to speak it say it go against the enemy and speak the truth of god's word against the enemy a biggest and greatest example is the lord jesus himself 
We read about his temptation in Matthew chapter 4. When Jesus fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. And at the end of those days of fasting, Satan comes to tempt him. And he gives him all kinds of suggestions. And the book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus was also tempted. Tempted in every way, yet without sin. Which simply means... He conquered every time. Every single time Jesus won the battle against the devil. But what was his secret? In this struggle of temptation in Matthew chapter 4, you know, uh, there are at least three suggestions that Satan makes. Firstly, he says, turn the stones into bread. After all, you're the son of God. You can do it. And then Jesus replies. The scriptures that he is quoting are from the book of Deuteronomy, where he tells the devil, no devil, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So how did Jesus tackle the first dart? He spoke. He spoke the word. He spoke the scriptures and said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. And the enemy comes in with the second suggestion. You know, when he says, um, uh, uh, you bow down before me, I'll give you all the, all the nations of the world. I think that's the third one. Uh, and Jesus says, hey, wait a minute. It is written that you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you serve. And so Jesus tackled Every suggestion of the enemy. The second one was when, when, uh, the, when Satan asked Jesus to, to fall from the temple height and that the angels would come and protect him. And Jesus said, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And so each time what Jesus did is he used the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God from his mouth against the devil and said, it is written. It is written. Now, when the enemy comes against us and says, oh, there's no future, the, the times are difficult, the job market is difficult. Yes, these are natural realities. But we as people of faith, we hold on to the word of God and we begin to speak the truth of God's word where we say that for a righteous man, you know, uh, uh, my day is only getting brighter. It's going to become brighter until the noonday sun. And God has a future for me. God has good plans for me, plans to prosper me, not to harm me, to give me a hope and a future. He will make a way in the wilderness. He will make rivers in the desert places for me. I am like a tree planted by rivers of water, streams of water, and I bear fruit in season. My leaves will not wither. Whatever I put my hands to, it will prosper. It is written, devil, there is a future, a very good future, because the Lord my God goes before me. Amen? Pull out the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Speak it through your mouth and see the glory of God. See the victory of God. Every lie that the enemy speaks against us and says, oh, we don't have enough, we're never going to have enough. No. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, is my covenant God of provision. He will provide. He will provide according to his riches in glory. Amen? Begin to speak hope, speak life, speak health. Maybe we are struggling with uh, problems in our body, in our health. Speak the word. The Lord said, he is my covenant God of healing. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. He will remove sickness away from me. He will bless my food. He will bless my water. He sends his word. He heals my diseases. He forgives my sins. He heals all my diseases. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. Begin to speak to the situation. Speak to the condition. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the giants. We don't go in our own strength. 
but we go with the power of the word of god and as we release the sword of the spirit that's a real attack on the enemy we don't want to speak you know just our thoughts our feelings sometimes our feelings lie and they say hey it's not a good day you woke up on the wrong side of the bed okay the coffee was bad you know the the dog is not behaving behaving itself like all kinds of things and then we we don't want to believe god we just say hey it's simply a bad day nothing good is going to happen to me sorry those are our feelings we don't want to speak our feelings instead we speak what the word of god says and we say my god his favor surrounds me like a shield wherever i go today god's favor is going to surround me like a shield doesn't matter you know which side of the bed i woke up this morning speak the word stand aligned to the truth of god's word and battle the enemy the spoken word the spoken word is something that we can learn to release every time just open up your mouth and say i am blessed can we all do that church yeah don't worry about who's listening next to you just say it i am blessed i am victorious i am triumphant i am a minister of god i am a servant of christ a channel of his blessing to many people i receive his word i believe his word and i live by his word christ is my master and to him i am in absolute surrender wherever i go the lord makes a way for me my peace is like a river i will prosper like the tree planted by streams of water the work of my hands is blessed my resources are abundant i am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places i am a child of god i am redeemed we can just keep going on and on and on and on there's so much that god has done for us and as we speak every word that faith that we're carrying in our hearts we're moving into the experience of that faith through our confession through our declaration it's one way to keep holding on to the promises of god to speak the word even when it seems like we're in a contrary circumstance amen so speak the word at all times i'm just going to share a few things before we close this morning um sometimes the question arises uh, as to um whether we can quote scriptures from the old testament you know whether that is valid for believers of the new testament uh, or believers under the new covenant the answer is yes we can claim promises from the old testament we can quote scripture from the old testament uh, because even jesus he quoted from the old testament so when jesus accepted them we too can and we know the bible says in second timothy 3:16 that all scripture is inspired by god and it is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and instruction in righteousness so all scripture old and new uh, is inspired by god so it's okay for us to claim promises even from the old testament uh, and finally the only important thing that you know we need to be careful about is to understand or recognize uh, how to apply those scriptures because there are passages of uh, the uh, old testament which are applicable to all but then there are those that are applicable to individuals so things like um, uh, abraham when god called abraham out of uh you know the ur of uh, chaldees that was just for him it was not everyone so god doesn't call all of us out of our places right uh, or when god called abraham to sacrifice isaac it doesn't mean that god's going to call all of us uh, to to sacrifice an isaac so we need to see how to apply 
the promises or the word appropriately and that's something that we must be careful about and here's the great news all the blessings that God promised uh, to his people in the uh, Old Testament especially the Abrahamic covenant it is applicable to us and the book of Galatians talks about it Galatians 3 talks about how the blessings of Abraham are now our blessings and under the new covenant we have better promises if you look at the Old Testament and you know we are wowed by the experiences of people what the Bible is saying is our experiences should be much greater that's what it means better promises under the new covenant uh, and the promises of God given in the Old Testament for people who fear him are very much applicable to us because we fear the Lord and God is no respecter of persons. I just want to call the worship team up. If you could please um, come up. Uh, we'll take you know, some moments to respond to the word and pray. Uh, but I just want to make this one point that God is no respecter of persons. When we look at um, Esther, when she believed God, there was a deliverance for her people. But things were going wrong for her people. Uh, there were decrees made. But the powerful thing that happened in scripture is when Esther and the people sought the Lord, the tables turned. God did it for Esther because there was one woman who believed and the people believed and they held on to the promises of God for their community. God is not a respect. And today, if we believe God the way those people did, what they experienced can become our reality. There are many others in scripture. You find Daniel in the lion's den. And today you wonder, God, you did it for lion. Uh, Daniel, okay? You did it for Daniel. You shut the mouth of the lions. Can you not do it for me? Maybe... Our lines look very different. I'm sure they're not family members or, you know, workplace colleagues. <laughs> Maybe some spiritual um, enemies that we have. But God can do it. Maybe those are voices that are speaking against us. But God is no respecter of persons. If Daniel could believe God and God rescued him in the lion's den. When you and I believe God today, no matter what our lion looks like, he delivers us. Amen? And so God is looking for people who will believe. And we've seen the combination. Believe. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Hear the word. Let faith arise in our hearts. Believe the word. The word is very near you, in your heart, in your mouth. Speak the word. Declare the word. Proclaim the word. Release the power of the word. If God can do it for those under the old covenant, how much more for us? Let's rise to our feet, church. <coughs> Father, we respond to your word. Lord, we thank you that you are teaching us to see the fruit of our faith. Lord, we arise and we speak your word, your word in our mouth. That is the weapon against the enemy. Every stronghold of the enemy will break as we speak that word as we declare the authority 
of that word, O oh God. Lord, we speak your victory. We speak your glory. We speak your triumph, O oh God. was defeated you have rendered him powerless every work of the enemy has to bow down before the Lord Jesus who has conquered 
on the cross of Calvary. And this morning we declare the victory of the cross over every sickness, over every affliction, oppression of the evil one. We speak life into hopelessness this morning. We speak a release of miracles, supernatural provision, breakthroughs, open doors. And the life of God upon every heart, every life, every family that is represented here. Father, even as we speak the word, we thank you for the power of the word that is being released into our lives and our circumstances. And Father, we give you thanks for the victory, Lord. We give you praise for all that you have done in our midst this morning, God. And all that you are going to do as we put our faith in you. This morning, God, we declare as a church that we are a radiant church. We are the bride of Christ. Lord, whom you are preparing to be that glorious church, strong in the word, strong in the spirit, a church that arises, a church that takes its place, a church that is a conqueror. Father, we thank you for the authority that you have given us, God, that we are seated in the heavenly places with Christ and we subdue every work of the evil one. As God, may your word always be on our lips, Father. And thank you for the fruit of those words. Thank you, God. Thank you. Just want to invite those if you've never put your faith in the Lord Jesus, you've never acknowledged Him as the Son of God and invited Him to come into your life, I want to give us this invitation of your own free will. If you're feeling led in your heart to say yes, I want to ask Jesus to come into my heart. I want to pray with you. So if there's anyone like that, could you please indicate by lifting up your hand please or, or our online viewers, if you could indicate in the chat, we just want to pray together with you. If there's anyone like that. Yes, God, Father, we thank you for this new life that we have in you because of what you have done. God, we pray that many, many, many souls, O oh God, would receive salvation. Thank you, God. Even right now, we just want to thank you for moving upon hearts and um, making yourself real in the lives of people. Father, once again, we give you all the glory, all the honor and praise for your work in our hearts, in our lives, oh God. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. 
do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.